What is up, Math Mob? We're back at it again with another video. Unit 2, Lesson 2, project Projections and Dilations. In our focus question, how can you apply a dilation to a figure when the center of dilation is the center of the grid? So let's take a look at our warm-up. What do you notice? What do you wonder? So our warm-up, you may have wondered if this center is the center of dilation. You may have noticed that all these lines meet in the center, and it looks kind of like a spider web. We have circles, a bunch of circles, and you may have wondered if these spaces are the same distance. Okay, problem number one. It says the larger circle D is a dilation of the smaller circle C, and P is the center of dilation. Number one says draw four points on the smaller circle, not inside the circle, and label them E, F, G, and H. So you can pick any points along the smaller circle, label them E, F, G and H. I'm just going to pick these. I'm going to label them E, F, G, and H. Now we want to draw rays from P, the center of dilation, through each of those four points. In fact, I'm going to change two of these right there and right there. So G and H. Now I'm going to draw my rays from the center of dilation through those points. Okay, and I'm going to label the points where the rays meet the larger circle E prime, F prime, G prime, and H prime. So I have right here E prime, F prime, G prime. and H prime. And number four says complete the table. In the row labeled S, write the distance between P and the point on the smaller circle in the grid. So between P and the smaller circle. So point E is right here and it is two spaces. F is right here and from P to F it's two spaces. From P to G is 2, and from P to H is also 2. And we're going to do the same thing for the larger circle from the center to the larger circle. So for E right here, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and F, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. G prime, one, two, three, four, five, six. And H prime, one, two, three, four, five, six. And number five says the center of dilation is point P. What is the scale factor that takes the smaller circle to the larger circle? So if we're looking at the scale factor from the smaller circle to the larger circle, and we look at these these coordinates here, or these points, from the smaller circle to the larger circle, we would have a scale factor of three. Since we're multiplying each of these points by three, two times three is six, going from two spaces to six spaces. 
Okay, question number two it says, here is a polygon A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D. And it says, dilate each vertex of polygon A, B, C, D using P as the center of dilation and a scale factor of two. Label the image of A as A prime and label the images of the remaining three vertices B prime, C prime, and D prime. Okay, so we're going to do a scale factor of two. So right here we are two, two units from P. So along this, this line here we're going to go two times two would be four. So we're going to both go four units. One, two, three, four. And that will be B prime. And I'm going to do the same thing with A is one, two, three, four. Four times two, we're going to do a scale factor of two. So four times two is eight. So four, five, six, seven, eight. There's A prime. D is one, two, three, and three times two is six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. That's D prime. And then C is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And 5 times 2 is 10. So 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And that's going to be C prime. Okay, step number two says draw segments between the dilated points to create polygon A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime. So I'm going to draw lines between these segments. So what are some things you notice about the polygon, the new polygon that's made? So you may have noticed it looks like a larger version of the polygon A, B, C, D these angles, these corresponding angles look the same and these lines here look like they might be bigger versions of these lines down here. So question four says choose a few more points on the sides of the original polygon and transform them using the same dilation. So how about we choose this point right here and let's choose somewhere along this line this point right here so we're going to draw a line from the center of dilation through that point I'm going to draw a line from the center of dilation through that point and then draw the new points on the new figure. So what do we notice? We are one about two units from the center of rotation here and we are one, two, three, four, about four units from the center of rotation here. So on this one, we are one, two, three units. And on this one, we are one, two, three, four, five, six units. So it appears that we have the same scale factor between those points. Number five says dilate each vertex of polygon ABCD using P as the center of dilation and a scale factor of one half. So I'm going to take these lines off. And I'm going to make a new figure, but instead of multiplying these by two, I'm going to multiply them by one half. So we'll start with A. One, two, three, four times one half is two. So we're going to go one, two.
And then B is 1, 2 times 1 half is 1. And then C is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 times 1 half is 2 and a half. So we're going to go 1, 2, I'm going to estimate about right there. And then point D is 1, 2, 3 times 1 half is 1 and a half. 1 and a half right here. Again, I'm estimating. And label the image of A as E. So this is point E. B is F. C is G. And D is H. And we're going to make our lines now. We're going to connect the points. Okay, so what do we notice about polygon EFGH? Again, it appears to be a scaled copy of ABCD, except that it's smaller, right? It's all these points are half the distance. All the EFGH points are half the distance of ABCD from the center of or center of dilation. And one thing you might remember is that if we have a scale factor greater than one, it makes the shape bigger. And if we have a scale factor less than one, it makes the shape smaller. And since our scale factor here is one half, it makes a smaller version of ABCD. So some other things about these shapes are the angles, right? The corresponding angles. This angle here, this angle here, and this angle here, they correspond to each other and they're congruent. And the same thing with these corresponding angles. In fact, all the corresponding angles are congruent to each other. Or are congruent. Also, if we look at these lengths here, since A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime is has a scale factor of two, that means all these side lengths are two times bigger. And we can check that. If I draw this line here and I move it out, it's going to be two of those because that has a scale factor of two. And that works for all of these. If I take this line here again, it's going to be twice as big as this line. So from G to H is half of C to D. And I can check that also by making a line G to H. And then I can move that out. There's going to be two of those. So these are scaled copies of each other. Okay, let's take some notes. So how does a circular grid help create a dilation of a figure? Well, a few things. It's easy to count the spaces from the center of dilation so that we can figure out the scale factor. And the rays start from the center of dilations, and the circles around the center of dilation are all the same distance from each other, so that also makes it easy to count. And when we do that, when we create a figure using a center of dilation and a scale factor, it makes a similar image, meaning it's a scaled copy. 
that is either bigger or smaller than the original, but it could also be the same size of the original if the scale factor is one. So dilations always have a scale factor, and they will always have a center of dilation.